So my name is Sean Downs. Uh, this is Jojo. Um, we both work here at uh, Radiant Church. Um, so I am uh, the director of production here at Radiant Church. I've been on staff here for about a year and a month now. Um, we both uh, work together in a ministry in Kansas City uh, for many, many years. And I'm one of the pastors as well. Uh, and then Jojo, he, so we have three production staff members. So everything you see here, it's, it's three staff members. It's me, and then Jojo oversees all audio for every like department, whatever it needs that might be. He runs our main service uh, in Richland's audio and all the teaching and training for that. And then David, uh, he oversees all lighting and video. And then everything else is all volunteers. So you've got a team of 50 volunteers, which sounds like a lot, but we also have the two campuses, about five services. We have student services and kids and special events. So even though it's 50, it also feels like it's not enough at times. I'm sure you guys know. I mean, so we're, we also try to, one of my goals is to make sure that, you know, volunteers aren't overworking themselves, which that's, that's one of the key points of being prophetic and sponsor. Being in a prophetic environment is actually having the energy and the, the bandwidth to be able to do it. If you're always overworked, you're not going to be able to feel that sensitivity. So anyway, it's just us, and um, that's kind of it for introductions. Uh, just a little context, too, is JoJo and I, we didn't start off as, like, uh, production people. When I came here, I wasn't production. I was at, we, were, we were both worship leaders, singers, musicians, that's that's my background. So the ministry I worked at, I was... We both played guitar in a band. We both, we both were in a band, played yeah, guitar yeah. together. We actually played with Ryan Kondo in Kansas City. Um, uh, my wife, I mean, I was with Corey and Caleb, and we were all in Kansas City together. And so my our background is actually music and, and worship leading and singers and musicians. And so we took, that's a major part of how can you do production for an environment, is actually we took our worship leader mindset and put it, inserted it into production. Um, and so I think that's what's really kind of set us um, in a certain uh, field is by basically we think like worship leaders, not as like technicians. And that, that's, a, that's a major component. So uh, that was a really long introduction, but I just wanted to give you guys a context what's going on. Uh, we do want to do mostly Q&A, and so I'm going to try to, I'm very long-winded, I love teaching, I love I love to talk, so I'll just go and go and go. It's true. <laughs> Which, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Yeah. I, I love to get a pulse just yeah. for the room of... Like, literally pulses. So yeah. we, it's hot. It it's hot is, here. It's no, uh, who, who here actually does production at their church? Who here oh, wow. is here because they're like a jack of all trades, wears a bunch of hats, worship, that sort of thing? And then who's strictly just like worship? And then if I didn't push any category, raise my hand. <laughs> What's up, Jerry? What's up, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry wears the most hats out of anybody. Yeah. So, technically, I did push my hand. Yeah. I guess you're not wearing a hat right now, though. That's awesome. I love the, I love the spread. So we're going to talk just for a little bit, and then we want to uh, open it up for questions on just on whatever it might be as far as practical, spiritual, how do we apply this in our church or with volunteers or with staff or whatever it might be. We want to be able to do that. So we just want to hit a couple points just to kind of kind of prime the pump and kind of let you know, like, from our heart, this is this is how we set our hearts when it comes to a worship environment uh, in the in the idea of production. Like, how do we do production in a worship environment? Um, so there's this. I'm going to open with this quote. And every time I like I would say this quote, people are like, "Wow, that's really cheesy. Why would you say that?" But I'm going to I'm going to do it again. Fifteenth time's the charm. Let's see what happens. No. But, I heard this quote really stuck with me, but I, this is kind of something I've been setting for me. Is cool is only cool as long as cool is cool. It's really cheesy. It's really cheesy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so cool is only cool as long as cool is cool. Meaning it's fleeting. It, it, something's gonna be cool, and then like everyone wears black and denim, and probably in two years, everyone's gonna look like nerds as they're wearing black and denim. Like it's only cool for a little bit. So we can't chase being cool. We can't chase being unique. We can't chase something just for the sake of it being cool and different because cool and different never lasts. So the things that last are the two things that I want to hit, which is excellence and Jesus. Okay, Jesus will always last and excellence or stewardship will always last. 
And so we want to kind of break down those two points a little bit, because that those are the things we want to, to break down. But the most important thing that I want to hit down first is, is Jesus. Okay, so like I said, when I came here to do production, I was I did 10% production before I came here. I was I was pastoring, I was discipling, I was teaching the word, I was worship leading. That was all that I did. And the only thing that was different is I just took what I did and I just inserted it into production. You could have put me in the cafe, you could have put me in parking, you could have put me in worship, you could have put me in the school, and I would just bid me in production because it comes from it. What you do with your hands comes from an overflow of your heart. Okay, so you cannot do anything with excellence or with love or obedience if it's not coming from an, an inward health. So when I sit down, all my volunteers, before I meet with them, I tell them, you know, I actually could care less how great you are at what you're doing. I actually care about the, the health of your heart because what you do with your hands, it'll be excellent. It'll be great because you care about it because it's coming from a relationship with the Lord. And so I'm trying to get people to buy into, I want to serve the Lord and I want to have a relationship with Him. I want to worship Him because then you're going to care what you're doing. We don't want technicians. Technicians can never be prophetic. Technicians can never be sensitive because they're only thinking of the next step. Okay, so... That's so good. Thank you. You're doing really good. <laughs> so two ways that you can do this is, is the Word and a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you cannot be... I'm going to keep looking back because I keep, I keep wanting to say prophetic in a production environment, but it's production in a prophetic environment. But I'm going to say prophetic in a production environment. It's, we're just breaking boundaries right here. So you can't be prophetic... In, in the realm of production or worship, or whatever, if you don't know the word, okay? So what, what enables me to, so I've been doing graphics for almost every session in here, and I, I'm a terrible speller. I never did graphics where I came here, but I was finding, wow, I'm actually really quick at putting up choruses or verses because I know the scripture. Because I'm like, I can see where is the pastor going, where are the singers going, because we're, we're rooted in a central authority of the scripture. Okay, we're all singing from the scripture. We're all teaching from the scripture. It's our, it's our beacon. It's our, well, not to beat you on the nose, but it's our true north. Huh? Like that? <laughs> on, on brand. Yeah, thank you. On brand. <laughs> Um, and so it's our true, it's our true north. It's everything that we're we're gazing and focusing on is the Word of God. And then it also comes from a friendship with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I encourage all of you that if you are like, I want to, I want to, I want to be spontaneous, I want to be prophetic, I want to do this. Then the two things you need to do is you need to read the Scripture in the morning. You need to read ten chapters a day, or one chapter a day, or or, or two verses a day. Whatever it is, start off successful. Read the scripture and just talk with the Holy Spirit. And just pray, talk, but not like in a, okay, ah, oh, dear God, I'm going to, but just actually talk to him like a friend. Because when you start to recognize his voice, then you can start moving in nuances. So there's times where things just happen because uh, I've developed a relationship with the Lord. So this is small movements. And so when a team of people does that, the Lord isn't, like, the Lord's going to move on a team, and we all move together, and all of a sudden, you'll find there's things that are happening, they're like, wow, how did we just time all of that? It's like, well, it's the Holy Spirit, he's, he's just moving on us. So those are the two important things, you know, the Word and the Spirit, um, that, that will never fade. You can, you can pour every minute you have into this, and it'll never be in vain, it'll never be wasted, it'll always produce fruit, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is excellence is always excellence. But I wanted to I want to uh, try to clarify what the idea of excellence is. And so, the, first of all, excellence can be confused with perfection. Meaning, if you're excellent, that means you have no more faults, you have uh, no more weaknesses, or you lack nothing. Or excellence can be confused with maturity. Meaning, I will when I excellence is when I finally obtain that level. And only after I cross that threshold, okay? So it's, it, we kind of put excellence up on this pedestal, and we kind of say, okay, this is, it, uh, it kind of, we tend to idolize it, like this thing that we have to search after, and we can never be excellent until we get there. So the problem with that is it ends up um, kind of, uh, what's the word I want to use, paralyzing us. Because either we idolize it in a, in, in a proper way, or we feel like we can never obtain it, so why even try? Okay, so there's, there's two things, the two ways I can do that. But biblical excellence, what does excellence actually mean is, is just this. It's doing the best you can right now with what you have. 
Okay? So all of us are in a season where you have a certain resource, whether that be time, people, money, and you have a certain level of, <clears throat> of skill, craft, maturity, but that does not mean that you can't be excellent. Excellence is not perfection. Excellence is not weakness. Excellence is not a, a state of maturity. Excellence is right now, God, I'm going to do the best I can with what I have, with what you've given me. And when we steward what we have, the Lord gives more. And we, we, you can see that all throughout Scripture. And so that's, that's what we want to strive for. Is When we strive for excellence, it's I'm going to steward this. And then there's going to, because if, the, if you get more and you can't steward what you already have, you're not going to be able to steward that. So you can't just keep waiting until, man, I can't wait until I get a videographer that can do those kind of backgrounds. But well, if you can't even manage the plain black background, you're not going to be able to manage color because you're going to lose your mind. And then, you, you know, oh, I can't wait till I have this or these microphones. It's like, no, if you can't make this microphone sound good, you're not going to make any microphone sound good. So there's just different things that you have to be able to work on. So I want you to hit a little bit of... So when it comes to excellence, though, when we set ourselves up with, okay, I'm going to do the best I can with what we have, there, what's a practical way that we can uh, do that? So, Jojo. Yeah, so... Uh... One of the important things for me is making excellent execution uh, our starting point of the race, not the finish line. Looking at execution as sort of like the base level, this is our starting point, especially in a prophetic environment, which all of this kind of ties in, which I'll go down to. Uh, set lists and run sheets should only be used to increase our flexibility, not embolden rigidity. If our systems aren't set up in a way that enables us to be excellent with the run sheet, then we'll never be able to adequately support prophetic moments that take us beyond our PCO service order. So looking at, okay, what do I have? What have I been given? What am I stewarding right now? How can I, with a spirit of excellence, execute that on weekends or for prayer meetings or for whatever it is that you're doing in an excellent way and make that, you know, this is... This is the expectation that we're going to do the most of what we have, even if it's a little, even if sometimes that means scaling back yeah. so that you can actually execute with excellence with what you have so that, you know what, you're not stressed out, you're not, your mind's not going in a million different places because you're overwhelmed or you're not able to support what you have been given, which ties into stewardship, because in order to operate in the prophetic, at least for me, some people thrive in chaos. Uh, I don't. I, I don't. He, Sean loves chaos. I, I love feeling comfortable, like all of my boxes have been checked, everything's working, things are going well, and it, it just not a practical note. For me, that's after, a lot of the time, in a service element or for a worship service, after that's done is the, is the moment where I can say, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you doing? Holy Spirit, what are you saying? And then you can enter in with where the worship leader's going, because if you're... 90%, maybe 100% down at the board for me, a soundboard. If, you're, if your focus is down here and not necessarily what's happening on stage, you can miss where uh, Corey's trying to take it or where the Holy Spirit's moving in the room at the time because you're focused on just trying to stay afloat. You're essentially just treading water. Um, you want to touch on anything on that? Yeah, so to, to kind of give another picture to what Judge was talking about, so he's talking about how we want to make excellence our starting point, not the, not the final goal. So structure is important. We need to have structure. So it, it, the, it could almost seem like structure and, and spontaneousness or spontaneity are two opposite ends of the spectrum. It's like, well, we can either be, you know, like the robot churches that just like they hit play at the beginning of the service and it, nothing changes until they get to the end of the service. Or you could be like the other churches are just kind of like wild and free, and they don't even, pastors even always going to talk about when he goes up there, and the songs aren't picked, and we don't know what's happening. <laughs> Which both is great. Yes, and, and we've, we've had both happen at our church, and we've, you know, and it's, it's, you know, both are good. But they are not on two opposite ends of the spectrum. So what we need to look at is structure actually promotes spontaneity. And so you have to have structure in order to be spontaneous. Now, to give you an example, um, so we, we actually used to come from uh, an environment of, uh, we used to work at a house of prayer in Kansas City, and it was very spontaneous, but we had a certain model that we followed so that we could easily flow in and out of spontaneous moments. 
So we use the language of on-ramps and off-ramps. So if you were to go, let's say, uh, is, is everyone here from Michigan or is people not really from here? Okay, so I'm not really from Michigan, I'm from Kansas City, so I don't know this thing yet, so I'm still cracking <laughs> out. So I'm not gonna use any cities because I'll botch them all. So if I'm driving from point A to point B, and it's gonna take me 20 minutes to get there. I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna get in my car, and as I'm, I know the end goal, I know where I'm going, I'm gonna go to point B. Everybody in the car with me knows we're going to point B. But all of a sudden we get hungry, we're starting to feel something, man, I need to go to the bathroom, I'm getting hungry, whatever, and so you pull off to an, on, to an off ramp, that's, you know, an interstate off ramp, and you get off and you get some food, you go to the bathroom, blah, blah, and now you're like, okay, I'm not really feeling anything anymore, I'm feeling good now, now, now what do we do? And you're not just stranded up on the side of the road now, like, oh my gosh, we just got off the road, we're lost, but it's like, no, you, you know where you're going, go to point B, get back on the highway, and start driving to point B. Now take that picture, you can, you can put that in flowing with the Holy Spirit. So we have a service order. We, we put work into our service order. We know these are our songs, these are our times, these are our verbal points, this is our message, this is how long the person's gonna speak for, this is how long this is gonna happen. But then at any point in time, all of a sudden you might feel the Holy Spirit hitting on a song to where like the, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is hitting on a song in a way where you're like, wow, let's start singing a chorus, let's sing some music out of that. But then let's say you've gone off the trail and you've been going for like five minutes and then now you feel the Holy Spirit's kind of like lifted off that moment. Now you're like, oh God, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And then you just kind of like, okay, I want to sit down. Like we don't have to end it, but you can say, okay, well, I don't know what to do now, but actually I know what the next thing is. The next thing is song number three. Or you know what, let's go on to this next point. And you can easily bring it back in and they keep flowing in and flowing out, but you can only do that if you have a structure. It's like a, a, another quick picture is like a, a football a football team. I'm also a terrible at sports, so I don't know really anything about sports. JoJo's. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> JoJo's really smart at sports. I know nothing. It's something that I purposely stayed away from. So, uh, so. When the guys that have the ball, no, it's easy. Uh, so when a quarterback is in a huddle, he, he tells everybody, this is what we're going to do. Okay, you're gonna run here, you're gonna run here, I'm gonna throw it to you, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna fake everyone out over here. Okay, everyone's got it, okay, we're good to go. Okay, ready, we're gonna do the play. And they're, they're doing the play, then all of a sudden something changes. Okay, something happens, and so it, not everyone just like panics and like runs around, but they know that, okay, this is what we're supposed to do. We're gonna call an audible, and we all know what we're gonna do and how we're gonna respond. Okay, because, but they can only do that because they know the plays, they have the structure. So you have to, that's the whole point of all of this, you have to have a structure in order to promote the spon spontaneity, okay? Oh, wow. Is this phone or something? Yeah, oh, it's great. It's great. I'm so sorry. It's not like he's behind me. <laughs> I know. Okay, so closing point, and then we're going we're gonna to open it up for questions. We'll have about, you know, a half hour -ish for questions. Is the other important thing that you need to look at, so all of you have, you wear different hats. Some of you are purely singers, musicians, worship leaders. Some of you are purely production, um, or whatever language you want to use. Something to say tech team or production team or whatever. I don't, I don't care. And then some of you wear both hats. But what you need to look at is no matter who you are, whether you're a bass player, whether you're the actual person playing the acoustic and leading the songs, or you're the, the, the graphics operator, or whatever you might be, you are all worship leaders, okay? And this, every single one of your worship leaders, I actually, my favorite, and so I've, I've led worship on an acoustic, I've, I've been the one that picks the songs and leads the teams, done that for many, many years. I actually love playing bass the most because I feel like I can be the, like, the best worship leader I'm doing that because it's, a simple, it's simple enough for me that I can raise my head above like what I'm actually playing and I can actually lead the team what I'm doing because it's, it's, I, I can cruise a little bit more and I can actually direct and move and flow with the Holy Spirit. So the same thing, when I'm running graphics, like, which I was running for the service, like, I'm actually leading you all in worship. Okay, yeah, like, people are singing, but I'm also choosing, like, what, not only what we're hearing, but we're engaging the other senses. We're engaging what we're seeing, we're engaging what we're feeling, we're invoking emotion through lights and sound, which is, which is happening in heaven. I mean, all of, if you read, if you've never read the book of Revelation, you can read this, it's, it's, I'm not making this up, but around the throne of heaven, there's lightnings, there's rumblings, there's, there's thunder, there's flashes of light, there's colors. It's not just, let's listen to a cool song on Apple Music, but actually God wants 
all of our senses. And so we are all worship leaders. There's not one person. We are all coming together and we're leading the church in the body of Christ. Or leading the body of Christ united. Leading the church in worship to Jesus. Either way that works. Yeah, all of the above. All of those things we're leading. All of the bodies. So anyway, so you need to, production needs to be more than just a support role. If you have for either, huh? I said, come on, preach, <laughs> pastor. If, uh, if, if you have designated yourself into, I'm just this, or I'm just that guy, it's, it's, from e it's, it's, it's actually insecurity. It's not humility. It's not, oh, I like being in the background of things. It's because you're not seeing the full mantle of responsibility the Lord is placing upon you. Because in heaven, there is not a worship team and a tech team. In heaven, it's surrounded by a sea of worshipers. Yeah. And they're all doing different yeah, things. Yeah. But we're all leading worship. We're all worshiping Jesus. So it's more than just a support role. So because of that, we need to actually be stewards of what God has given us and carry the prophetic spirit. Carry the responsibility of knowing the scriptures, what is on the Lord's heart, and then moving with the Holy Spirit and actually being the spear as opposed to always being in the background. We need to actually be innovative and pushing forward. And it's going to be messy. It's going to be, you're going to make a lot of mistakes, but you don't know what's right or wrong until you actually do something that could be right or wrong. You have to push forward. You have to do something. So there's many times where we're doing something we're like, you know what? This may flop, but we're going to go for it. We're going to try it because we're coming at it through a spirit of we want to worship the Lord. Again, if you keep those two things, I'm, this is all about Jesus and he alone it deserves all my praise. So I'm going to give him everything I have and I'm going to steward what I have. And what you're doing doesn't come from a, well, I don't want to be too flashy or I don't want to do this. Like, no, you, you, you're not being flashy if you're, if you're doing it uh, from the spirit of worshiping God. When you try to do it from a fear of man or a spirit of performance, then you're going to be doing it for the wrong reasons. Okay? Good. Cool? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Any questions? Sorry, right. I just like. I got to take a breath. I just like got into it. So sorry if I sorry if I was yelling at any no, of you. And then questions can be anything. Something we talked about. What yeah. percentage you run your own? Like, yeah. All on. yeah. <laughs> I mean, so what's the temperature in here right now? I got a, I got a question for you guys just specifically on Thursday nights, right? If we were here at Radiant on a Thursday night rehearsal, um, oh, yeah. I've been a part of churches where the tech director calls the shots. Kind of go with the sports analogy. He's the quarterback. Um, I think more churches, the worship leaders, the quarterback, kind of calling things out. What I'm hearing you guys describe is kind of like you're more like a basketball team. Mm -hmm. You guys are kind of working. There's cohesiveness from the yeah. stage and the sound booth, which I think is really awesome. If I was here on a Thursday night, like very practically, how are you guys kicking things off? What's the communication between front of the stage, front of the house? How much back and forth is there? Yeah, I actually love that. It is kind of like, you know, it's like a motion offense. You know, everybody's moving. Everybody has input. Everybody's important. On a Thursday night specifically, uh, the way that we would start it off um, uh, is usually we start off like our sound check to help dial ears. Um, and it's very simple. We, we go through, we don't really line check everything. I usually line check uh, everything before everybody gets there because I hate long sound checks. And I hate doing the whole like, all right, give me a kick. Give me a snare. So we, we start with the first song that we're going to do and we have the keyboard player who runs the click run the click, and we just have the drums play the chorus group to the first song. And that gives people, because we do personal in-ear monitor mixes, that gives people to dial in the drums without the, the, the pressure or the difficult atmosphere of like everybody's like, one, two, three, everybody comes in and it's like, when everybody's trying to like mix their ears and they're like, do I turn something up if I want to hear it or do I turn something down if I want to hear me? I don't know. Um, so we start off, and I talk, I come in the talk back, and I'm like, oh, let's do drums. I do drums for maybe you know, 20 seconds. And then I come in the talk back again, and I go, all right, let's do bass. And let's do electric one, let's do electric two, let's do a little bit of keys. Usually it takes maybe two minutes max. Um, and that's helpful for me, because I can get a full band mix, um, usually in that time. Uh, and for stuff outside of sound, uh, we don't really run graphics for rehearsals a lot of the time on yeah. Thursday specifically. It's mostly just band is rehearsing. It's more of a band rehearsal than like a production run through, production run -through sort of thing. And, and also, so a lot of this too is like, so Jojo, you've been here how many years? Uh, two years in April. Two years, I've been here for a year. 
Uh, David's been here like two years. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of, like, the worship leaders here have only been here for less than four years, like, more like less than three years. It's, it's a relatively new, like, worship and production staff. So, like, we are, we all have had experience in different areas. There's not, like, one, like, top dog who's been here for, like, 20 years who's kind of, like, running the shot. It's like, yeah, I'm the production guy. I'm, like, here running everything. So we've been, we've been to churches where it's, like, the production director, he runs everything. He calls everything. He is the boss over worship and production and everything else. He tells the pastors what's going next. Like, he, he like, runs everything. That doesn't happen here. There's, it's, there's a lot of people that, like, they have this, they have a role, and we kind of all work together, but then we all kind of wear a lot of hats. So, like, JoJo and I, we, we run things, but also, like, we're also musicians and singers, so the way that we might run things is, is a little different. And then, like, Caleb's over all of worship production, but also there's different worship leaders. So there's just, there's a lot of different hats going on. So it's, I think your question could be answered. It, it kind of depends on your, your staffing, your volunteers, your, uh, your specific situation, because I've seen it all, and I think all work, it just kind of depends on the specific, yeah. Can I ask a follow-up to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, you can do that. The idea of like spontaneity, do you guys practice spontaneity? Like these mm -hmm. ideas of like, you know, where you're off the track, and the prophetic to me, I've been in I've been in a rehearsal where I was on stage playing and we went into a spontaneous moment and it was like five minutes of just spontaneous like worship where we we're doing songs and musical line. I was like, this is some of the most amazing music I've ever heard. I feel so hot. This is so cool. I love that we're doing this. And then we did the session and we didn't even like do it. Or we like did it, it was like one minute long, it was terrible. I was like, what happened? <laughs> like and then some of that is like, well, we're not doing it. That's like, what's the reasons why we're doing it? Like, is I doing it to like show up? But there are moments where like, like, well, we were going to like, uh, it's like tomorrow we're doing like 45 minutes of just like prophetic worship in the middle of the corporate worship set. It's just like prayer room style, like just like worship. And we were gonna rehearse on Tuesday to like, come up with some like musical sketches, and we kind of like, ah, it's just busy. We're not gonna do it. So nothing we're doing tomorrow is rehearsed. But there's been times where we've had rehearsals for different things. And I like so Michael raised your hand. So we were on the we were in that band together. We played guitar. Michael was one of the bass player for it. So there's been times where we've come together and can't say we've re rehearsed things. And there's times where it's like, no, it just you kind of as you begin to develop relationship. And confidence, you can kind of move in and out of things. Yeah, I'll piggyback off that too because I think what I'm about to say is really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with prophetic moments, I feel like you can break down you, probably ninety percent of prophetic moments, at least that we do, uh, in two categories. Yeah. One of them is we rest into prophetic moments, and two is you break open into prophetic That's moments. Right. And what I mean by that is a lot of the time, uh, the worship leader. Uh, will kind of come with something prepared, whatever their, their heart is, and they might stay as, as little as, you know what, or we might have some room for spontaneous out of this song. And then out of that song, we will rest into that prophetic moment. And it might be 30 seconds and be like, okay, we didn't find anything. Or it might, you know, turn into something that is like what Katie did today uh, for the 9 a.m. which was just unbelievable. Um, Whereas that, I think, was more of a breaking into a prophetic moment, like something. Uh, and, and so I was, I felt like, oh, yeah, so I know that, so in rehearsal, Ryan said, hey, let's plan on waiting for a little bit after here's in heaven, in rehearsal. And so I was like, okay, I wonder what we'll do. So then we're playing it, and as we're playing, I'm thinking, we're about to go into something. I want to start I want to start asking the Holy Spirit for a melody, for an idea, or whatever. So I was actively, like, in my head as I'm playing, like, Holy Spirit, what should I play? And I'm, I'm kind of, like, not noodling, but kind of, like, I'm playing, like, a note. Every once in a while, I feel like, what feels like the Lord is on us right now? And I played three things and that I hated. I was like, nope, that sucks. And so I just, like, <laughs> so then I stopped, and I was like, okay, but I really want to break into something. So I played a little bit, and I was like, nope, that wasn't it. And I played again, and then I played something, and I felt like all of a sudden it was like, everybody just jumped into it. Now, we didn't talk about it, and but then we hit that for a long time, and Katie was singing out of it, and we had this, this vibe going with it. And so it was kind of like we were resting, 
but then also it was it took people to be like we're gonna we're gonna reach for something let's push and see where it is and then when we hit that vein the holy spirit breathed on it but it took our partnership with it too like it's a it's a partnership aspect yeah and then on the, on the other side of that i was in the booth sean was on stage and because i'm uh ready and almost expectant for that moment, I'm watching, I'm, I'm way far off the run sheet, I know that something else is happening, and I'm just sort of, you know, waiting, watching to see what is happening, seeing who's playing what and what to highlight in that moment, and uh, a lot of it's really practical, and a lot of it I, I like to look at as pretty spiritual, and uh, try and, you know, invite the Holy Spirit into everything that we do, so that was a long tangent that we got onto, yeah. but... Yeah, it's good. It's good. All right. Yes, what's your name? Me? Yeah. I'm Miriam. Miriam, hi. Um, oh. um, I am been the worship pastor at a church for a long time, but I just recently, the production part came underneath my department. I know nothing. I don't know how to talk to them about the techie stuff that they're talking about, but they're awesome people. Um, and we believe in the Holy Spirit and flow in the Holy Spirit and spontaneity in our services. I want to be able to appreciate the technology and just the like brains that our team has. I honestly feel like a lot of their systems are super difficult that volunteers can't grasp. So I guess my question is how in depth is the technology like in your booth? Like I, I can see yeah. the Macs, like they're beautiful. I, like I recognize the awesomeness of the Mac, you know? But, oh, yeah. you know, and trying to help lead, honestly, a very young yeah. team. Yeah, so it, you, all of you need to set yourself up to never stop learning, okay? You have to, you are all, the moment that you decide I have it figured out or I'm not going to learn anymore, you are, you are going to go downhill. You're, not gonna, you're never going to plateau, you're always going to go down. And so you have to constantly learn. So some of you might be more adept to like quickly picking up on things, or you might feel like, well, I'm more of a naturally like gifted tech person. It's like, no, everyone just like spent, like some people may be a little more logical or more abstract. I'm, people say I'm logical, I'm actually not super logical, but I like, um, I like learning things. So when I took this job, I actually knew nothing about production. I did a little bit of audio. I knew zero about cameras, zero about lights. I knew zero about how to simulcast it on the campus, how that wall works, or ProPresenter. I didn't use ProPresenter. But they actually like made me do like a, when they were like talking about hiring me, it was like, you need to show us what happens when you point a camera at someone and how does it get to someone's TV at their house? Go, you have a week. And I had to like study how to do that in order to like basically get hired. And so that just gives you, like, I learned it in a week. Not because I'm, like, a genius. It's just because I was like, I'm going to throw everything I have at this because I need to be able to, like, move here kind of thing. But that's a joke. But. Yeah. So, so, oh, so, oh, sorry. Sorry, I was going to close this point and you go for it. So to show the appreciation to your team is to throw yourself as much as you can at it. Ask them questions. Take notes. And, and learn as much as you can. Even, I, David, the lighting guy, Genius, Jojo, genius when it comes to their, their field. And there's half the stuff that comes in their mouth, I don't understand what they're saying. But I understand a small portion of it, and so that I can either know when they're like, with the blowing smoke, or like I know that like, I can help like start some conversation with them, and they, they at least see I that. Need, I need new mics. <laughs> <laughs> Not this um, so they can see that like I'm trying and I'm actually like trying to have that conversation with them. So it is a big world and it, it you can it depends on it can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. But I think start in small chunks. YouTube is amazing. Ask people that you like like talk with people, ask them questions, and just take as much notes as you can. Know that you it's not impossible if you learn. Is it hard to learn? Anything is difficult to learn. <laughs> Nothing is impossible to learn. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and then the second part of your question, you said that like systems seem really difficult and almost as if they weren't totally successful at the moment. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, we definitely uh, experience that all the time. Yeah. And a lot of our systems we have set up so not dummy proof, obviously you can't dummy proof uh, anything. Um, like, we don't want to train people to just hit buttons because then there's no buy-in. 
Um, we want people to take ownership over certain things, so you want to push volunteers, be like, okay, this is awesome. Go run, learn, learn it, and whatever that looks like for you. But there is a good, a healthy balance between like, okay, what are we actually going to be able to yeah. pull off? What can I give someone that they're going to feel confident in? Mm -hmm. Because if you're giving someone something and they don't feel confident, that's that you're almost doing them a disjustice. It's not necessarily it, it, there's like a good balance between like you don't want to just have somebody who's like, okay, hit button, hit button, hit button. I don't know why because there's no buy-in. But you don't want it to. You don't want them to be ill-equipped to the point where you're kind of setting them up for failure at the same time. So we, uh, pretty much everything we try to do, it's like we find the balance between like, okay, what's going to be awesome, yeah. and what can we pull off every weekend without um, without many points of. And, and a lot of systems, because again, we're new. All, probably all of them, we we blew up <laughs> every single one of them. We took stuff from one room, we put it in the other room, we did this, and then we were like, okay, we did that wrong, so let's take it over there, let's do this, let's make it simpler. But mostly for the goal of simplifying uh, and just having something that's going to fit what is best. Like you said, you just came into the position of being over this. Um, sometimes that comes with just, you know, changing some stuff around, and that's okay. Yeah, because there's things that sometimes we'll say no to, even though we're like, we would love this, but we can't sustain that level right now. Like when it comes to like buying an audio console, we'd be like, oh yeah, we'd love to buy this one. You know, we can run it, but no one else can run it, so that doesn't work. And so not that we, but we don't step down in excellence, we just have to be creative. How can we keep that excellence, but also sustain it and make systems simple when it comes to people wanting to step in and help? Yes, you have a question? Yeah. yeah. I saw that in like, the corner of my eye. Yeah, hi, my name's Kate. Hi, Kate. Um, so I'm both. I'm a worshiper, like music and production. So being a worshiper, how do you balance like doing production, like running production, and being able to worship at the same time, but like freely worship to where you're like you you're paying attention to what you're doing, but you're not worried about it, and you can still worship at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I have the same problem when I was playing electric today. Like it's it's to me, it's not a it's not an idea of how can I do this specific thing and worship at the same time. It's how can I do anything and worship at the same time? How can I like work my job? How can I like drive in the car and worship at the same time? How can I play guitar to a song I haven't played before and try to learn a part and also work at the same time? Or how can I run graphics and try to worship at the same time? It, it's all of that comes down to time because you need to be able to just, it needs to be like, uh, oh, what's, Oh, it was in another workshop. I was like, where did I hear this? So Pastor Joel Sorge was talking about uh, video editing. And one of the things he said was, like, you work, you keep giving time, time, and time to get, I'm paraphrasing now, because you were in there, so I, I, no, I was paraphrasing. But it turns into muscle memory, because once something becomes muscle memory, you then your brain can separate from it and do something else. And so there's, if I don't know a song on the guitar, I'm not in muscle memory right now. I, it's, I mean, I look like I'm like 100% focused on what I'm doing. I look like I'm not even worshiping anymore. I'm just like constantly looking down at my fingers to make sure I don't mess up. And, but then if I'm like, oh, I know this song, then it's like, great, I can play this song in my sleep. I can, I can enjoy myself, have fun. So when it comes to like graphics, if I don't know the program or I don't feel confident, I'm, there ain't no way I'm going to be worshiping because I'm just, it takes all my memory and my concentration to not like screw something up. But once you get used to it, I'm able to start worshiping a little bit more and it's, it's taken time. It's taken me like a year now to feel like I'm, I can at least do it without being a complete idiot. Yeah. So I think time is your best friend for all of us in practice, which is, goes with the time. Like you just got to do it over and over again. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, two questions. Uh, number one, uh, we manage a, a team of about the same amount as, as far as volunteers. Uh, how do you maintain, like you guys personally, how do you maintain philosophy while... Uh, Can you rephrase philosophy? Well, it's broad because I know you guys have a, you chase after a certain sound. You chase after a certain creative look as far as lights or mm -hmm. uh, the way that you do graphics, how, how you want that to be. How do you yeah how do they call it? yeah how do you how do you make that consistent within those philosophies while having volunteers and pushing them to be the ones to actually perform the tasks? Uh, so it's a good question. Um, what, what's funny is like so how old is your how many production staff do you have? Staff? Yeah, like who's so you okay? 
And how long have you been doing that? Uh, about a year and a half there. And do you feel 100% settled in your creative philosophy? Uh, no. Because it comes from the top <laughs> down. Me neither. I mean, we... Yeah. No, 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 so that, that it's not like a, it's not like a, a dog on you. Like, yeah. when we came in, we were, we were all new, and we were trying to figure out what do we want Radiant Church to be like? Because Radiant Church has been going for like 20 years. Right. There's been different, I mean, Jerry was my old job, like two peoples ago. Like, and Jerry had his, it wasn't a wrong thing, but Jerry had a philosophy, to use your word, a philosophy of what he wanted it to look like. And someone else came in, they had their thoughts. So it comes from the top down. So you right. have, it has to trickle down. Everything trickles down. Your relationship with the Lord, that'll trickle down. Your buy-in, that'll trickle down. Right. Your excellence level will trickle down. If my team doesn't see me care about what's going on, they will not care about what's going on. If my team does not see me in prayer and in the Word, they will not be in prayer and in the Word. If my team does not see me pushing forward, they will not push forward. And so you have to be the tip of the tip of that spear to, to in order to enable that. So you have to kind of figure out, what do I want it to be? And that you could change it. If, if it changes in a year, change in a year. In the year that I've had this team, right. like, we've changed things. Like, and we've, we've, we've decided on different avenues. We've decided on different creative ideas. Because, but we're all doing it together. We're kind of like, let's try this. And so it kind of comes from the top down. And once it comes from the top down, like, well, I'll just say it, the first step is you. You have to just figure that out first. Right. And then the next step, you hit that when you get there. That's going to take you some time. Because a lot of that's going to come from absorption. When they see what you're doing and you communicating it, it'll, it'll buy it. It's like a kid. Like 80% of what they see from their parents is what they learn. It's actually, right. they don't, only 20% is what they hear. It's 80% is what they see. And that's how they learn. So how do you do that uh, with multi-campuses? Multi-campuses, I mean, I, yeah. I travel. I go back and forth. So I'm here on a Saturday and I go there on a Sunday. Okay. And so I didn't always do that, but I was seeing that happen where I was, I need to make sure that I'm just kind of bouncing around. We have regular team nights where we all bring all you know, teams together. A lot of that more is the, the user word philosophy. That's not as so much style or look, but it's more about discipleship and value and heart. I want to, I want to create a culture. So again, my heart is not necessarily like to like this is the look we want radiant church. I'm not trying to promote a brand. Like I'm like actually I want this as a community of people because brand and culture that's gonna I mean radiance change like, gonna change. Yeah, the color of this stuff has changed like 15 times. Like you know, and like our logo has changed, and I'm sure it's gonna change again. You know, so it's like that's always gonna change. But culture that does, that's what you don't want to change. You want culture to be culture. You want it to be like a, a solid foundation. Yeah, dude, nice. Thanks, man. <laughs> yes. Sherilyn. Hi, Sherilyn. Um, uh, maybe this isn't an issue as much for you guys here, but I feel like a lot of my history with production has been opinions on lights being too bright, things being too loud. How do you... Oh, yeah. No, here, here, no one ever complains. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of this too loud. No, <laughs> nothing's too loud, nothing's too quiet. Nothing, no lobby speakers are too loud or quiet, the lights are too bright or too flashy, that never happens here. So you just have to move churches. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the pastor is so supportive of that, and I honor my pastor so much, and the fact that he's also so willing to, to want to hear that creative part too. But when you deal with so many people's opinions on what you're doing, yeah. like how do you handle that? Do you adjust according to those things? Do you thrive for what you really believe? So you, you need to go up. So if anybody comes to my team, I say, I either, I feel it. I, I, I try to step in as fast as I can if I can see it because I, I don't, they should not be responsible of having to try to figure out, should I be listening to you or not? I don't know who you are. Like, are you, are you like the second in command here? Or are you like, are you just a visitor? Like, I don't know who you are. And so, and so I will field everything, but also I just send them to our, our campus pastor. Like, it's just like, hey, yeah, go talk to Pastor John and, and, then, and, he'll, and let him filter that. Because we're, we're not going to turn it up or down or, or brighter or softer for everybody that comes to the booth. Right, and, yeah, it would say, well, it's like, what do you, you might as well just like leave this, turn house lights on and just like, we'll just play a CD like there. Everyone's happy. You know? <laughs> like, and then we'll, we'll play what song we're playing. We're like, okay, everyone put on headphones, sound like disco. Like, just go home. Like, we're not going to church anymore. So, so, 
Yeah, so that's the solution. <laughs> that's, you know, so always go up. So send them to someone out, and then if you're having problems with people around you, like your level, not like not people come from the outside coming in, still go up. So if, if you have people from your team that are saying it's too loud, too bright, too this or whatever, then go. Let's, hey, let's go talk with the person above us to see what do you want. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we could have an idea of a pastor lead. I mean, he's veto power. It's a pastor really thinks it's too loud. Okay, it's too loud. You know, it's just because it's it's his church. I mean, like, yes, it's all our church. We're all the body of Christ. We're all in this together. But ultimately, like, he is our visionary leader, and so we're yeah. all we're all following his vision, and his leadership. So you just got to go up with that, and then and then take every one of those moments as an opportunity to practice humility. Yeah. That's the second thing. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on a practical note, just finding ways to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Once you get those things dialed with your campus pastor or your head pastor or whoever it is, uh, finding ways that, you know what, we run, you might have a different volunteer, but you have a decibel meter, and we run the same uh, for every service, or you might have different lighting operators, and then it's like, hey, Maybe don't, we're not going to use the blinders at 100% at this angle or whatever lights do. Um, that sort of thing is really important because, uh, especially if it's like congregants or stuff like that, um, for one, again, it, it doesn't totally matter um, if it's set up in that way. Um, but they notice just, just stuff being different, you know, just finding ways to get it consistent, you know, get on the same page with whoever's in charge and set up your systems in a way that it can be consistent week in, week out. So it's not like 90 decibels one week, and it's like 100 decibels one week, and then it's 80. Yeah, um, yeah that's great. Awesome. Uh, let's go in the back here. So my name's Larry. I didn't know that my worship leader was in here, but she's... <laughs> He's like, <laughs> so I've been having a problem with my worship. <laughs> so this guy named Larry. You will... Uh, actually, my question was about... Your size, kind of, our entire congregation doesn't match your staff. <laughs> Three? <laughs> oh, church staff, got it. Two or more, baby. Two or more. I'm sorry to church. Let's do this. We do. So, so we have about 80 people in our church. Yeah. In the entire congregation. But um, the, the point that I was getting at was you guys have a team. So your team, do you do things together like for that uh, um, camaraderie? I mean, is that yeah. part of what you do? Oh yeah, it's my favorite thing. We went to the movies one time. Yeah, no, the, uh, after <laughs> after Rise Shine, I, at our Rise Shine conference, I was like, you guys knocked it out of the park. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. We're taking the day off. We're gonna go see the Avengers movie, and I'm gonna yes. buy you guys some food. It's just one of those. <laughs> well, okay, that's cool. And the brand. Yeah. <laughs> we are we are now called Light Church. Okay. <laughs> Speaking to planning center all the time in a prophetic environment. <laughs> what? So, because at the end of the day, like people aren't following a system; they're following people. And so, like you want to build a, a team, and you want to build from our. One thing I love about I'm going to brag on one of our campus pastors, our Portage campus pastor, Seven Seven Davis. He does this super well. I mean, he is constantly doing things with his team, fun things or whatever things, just to kind of help build that, like, we're a family. Like, we're doing this together. Like, we're not, we're not employees at a business, but we are, we are part of God's family. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're doing this together. So we do things, like, in production, we do things with the volunteers. Like, with team night, like, I have, like, my team nights is, like, they come over to my house, I cook them food, we play games, we might, you know, pray with each other, worship, or whatever, we just do different things like that. Um, but then, like, just as a staff, like, I try to, you know, I try to once a month, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, to, like, hey, let's just, let's go out, we might talk work for a little bit, let's just go out and just, like, just, just be, like, friends as well. Like, not because we have to be best friends, although, Jojo, you're my best friend, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was in JoJo's wedding. I made it so. Sure. Yeah, if I was in John's wedding. He was not my wedding. Um, he was too young. So anyway, yes. To answer your question, I, it's very important to to do that. Yeah. So I'm, before I knew she was here, I was going to brag and share a little bit about um, the fact there's there's only about 80 people in the whole church. Five of us on the worship team. 
in worship. Yeah. And she got us, she brought us here. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. That's yeah, awesome. awesome. Love that. All right, we have time for a few more because we started at 335. So we'll go to 435. Love it. And so, because I want to keep on time. So we'll do a few more questions. Okay, uh, so a preface real quick. So, hi, I'm Brandon. Hi. Brandon from Flemington. Oh, what's up, man? Yeah. Um, so we, over the last year, we've been He's like, I'm having problems with my pastor. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a follow-up question. <laughs> So, uh, so we, we uh, we're relatively small staff as far as like small volunteer staff mm-hmm. rather. Um, so we, over the last year, we've been pushing a lot of like automation, yeah. um, everything from automating ProPresenter through Ableton and things yeah. like that. Uh, our next big project is going to be automating some lighting and stuff. Yeah. Um, so with that, one of my questions is that with with some of this change and being small volunteer based, what do you find works really well? for the training aspect. Mm-hmm. Because even though some of it's automated, like building those pockets for prophetic worship, you can't really automate that because you don't know how long you're gonna be there, or you know, you might extend or go a different direction and things like that. Yeah, you're gonna get back on you know, the ramp, but those, those moments, so you need to still be trained even though a lot of it's going. Yes. So do you find that, do you do training sessions? Yeah. Do you let people like, come in and just use the equipment and like mess around? What do you find works well for that? So, uh, so what I've actually been, a big goal this year for us, our team kind of decided like what we want, want to do is not necessarily do a bunch of cool new things, we want to really work on building up our team as far as building owners, not just employees. And so that's a big project we're taking out. We're working on training material. We're trying to write material. We're looking at like doing video material. We're, we're brainstorming about it, like to try to figure out how to do that. And one of the the, the hiccups in that was trying to um, how much can we teach them without like just melting their minds with the <laughs> amount of information you can teach them on something. Um, but also teach them enough that they can actually own what they're doing. And so you have to strike that balance where is if I were to bring in like. Like, I always joke with my wife where I'm like, hey, so you want to, like, serve production with me sometimes? And she's like, no. Like, she doesn't care. She's like, she's like, can't be bothered with that. She's like, no, I don't do that. But I sometimes use, like, my wife as an example because she's super smart, super amazing, but she's also, like, not great with technology. Like, so she's just not super smart with that. So I sometimes I'll use, like, my wife as an example. Like, could she, like, understand what I'm saying right now? Like, when, as, as I'm writing out training in my backpack, I actually have training to my backpack that I'm proofreading. Is I'm reading through this training material, like, if I just give this to someone who doesn't know how to do it, like, can they understand what I'm talking about? But, so, we try to automate a ton of that stuff. So, a lot, I actually set up a ton of automation, not like crazy automation, but a lot of stuff to where they can hit it and not have to, like, there's less points of failure. But I need to be able to train them in a way where when it doesn't work, which happens all the time because the pro presenters somehow are a crazy monopoly. They're terrible, but somehow they're the only ones available, which is like, screw you guys. All right. Yep. Yep. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make a competing pro presenter. I'm gonna just quit everything and do that because I hate that. Okay. Anyway, uh, I hate one option. So so pro presenter doesn't always work, but so I need them to be able to, when they hit that button, it doesn't work. They don't just go. Which has happened. Well, like where I've looked at a, 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 one of my volunteers, and where like something just doesn't work, and they just they don't know what to do, so they sit there. I'm like, ah! I'm like running over there, and I'm like, I'm like, and so they're like, well, how's it? I'm like, I can't tell you right now. Like it's just like it's black. Like you got to do something. So, um, so you got to teach them enough to where they can have some ownership, but also strike the balance of like they don't want to know every single detail. You know, it's it's how much is their buying. But then I have people like. Uh, Rebecca, raise your hand right here. So Rebecca's one of our volunteers, and Dave, raise your hand. Dave, so both, they, they're actually volunteers of radio production. They both have, like, full-time jobs, and they have families and kids. And these are two people that, I just saw you, Seth, there's more in here, sorry, but there's two people right here where I use them as examples, not Levi, I use them as examples all the time where they're like, hey, I want to, I want to know everything I can about this. And they, they come, they take notes, they figure things out. So those are people where I'm like, you know what? I can start pushing more things onto them. But there's some volunteers that they just, they're, they're there, they want to serve, but they're not going to learn a lot because they just don't have that, like, either they don't have the capacity or they don't have the buy-in. So you have to kind of, like, see what you have. So you have to strike the balance between that. That, yeah. that helps. Yeah, that's good. 
But I think automation, making things simple, like it, it's all about simplicity but sustainability. And, it's, and, it, and, it's, and if spontaneousness is important in your church, spontaneity is important in your church, it's how can you easily get in and out of that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great. Good. Yes, sir. Um, I haven't been here on a Sunday morning. We're actually from Alabama. We're happy. Nice. Welcome, man. Um, but yeah, um, so I was wondering if you have a specific order of service that you have every week. And um, if you do differ from that, how you decide to, di to differ from that and how you decide about the creative elements that you will add. Yeah, it's a, it's a messy process. It's not perfect. Again, it's a young staff right now. But it, within the last like probably three or four years, it's been almost a, a whole new staff. It's, it's, it's radically different uh, staffing. So I kind of, I create the order of service. It's about 95% the same every week. The elements that change, like, are we going to do child dedications or water baptism? Is there going to be, like, a special, like, you know, extra thing that we're going to add at the end of something? Um, are we going to do communion or not, you know? And then, like, what will the verbal announcements be or what's the, you know, what, what uh, information you want to share, like, in our news video? Who's preaching? Who's leading worship? Those little things will, will change, but it's basically the same for as far as our, our normal weekend service, basically the same. Now, what goes in that process, there's a, our creative communications team. They will meet with the campus pastors. They have the whole, I think they have two years, but they have the whole year planned out. What are we going to hit every weekend? They have a whole, like, this verbal, this verbal, this verbal, we're going to plug this year, we're going to plug this year. And they start making all that stuff, like, months and months and months in advance. And then they just basically give it, I used to, we used to have a meeting where we talked to that, and we kind of stopped doing that. And so basically, they just tell me, here are the two verbals, here are your slides, I just plug it in, and it's ready to go. But all of that's been discussed with like the the like senior pastoral staff, which is even less than those those people, and the creative communications team. So we don't run that, and I don't really want to run that. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of stuff that I've been kind of giving up. Yeah. Sure. So in in what uh, what role does Ableton play in all that and how that relates to prophetic environment? Yeah, I love Ableton. We both love Ableton. We use it all the time, yeah. Love it, hate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ableton. No, I, 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 at the moment, again, it's, everything changes. At the moment, Ableton is uh, used to uh, used by our keyboard players, are the ones that launch the tracks. They run the click, and they use Ableton for their keyboard sounds. Um, and that's that's about it. We don't use it for any production. Yeah, concerns. we don't do any SMPTE, time code, MIDI, syncing with Ableton, so. Is there a re yeah. on that? Huh? What's the reason on that? Um, the reason on that is we don't, like, no, so, sometimes it's the, the skill level of everybody involved. Like, so if we were, like, fully staffed, like, it was just our staff production team, like, running, like, lights all the time. Like, if it was just David running lights every weekend, right. and we had, like, Caleb Culver playing keys every weekend, and they just, like, they knew their system, then it would work. And we've talked about doing that for maybe, like, special events where it's that, but when you have volunteers running, and if something were to go wrong with time code, they don't know how to fix it. So most of the time, with, when we have very few lighting operators that actually know how to use the light, so it's mostly David programming it, and then they're kind of just hitting cues. So again, it's the sustaining it. We could do it. We could mix video backgrounds on our sweet wall. We could do all this stuff. But if, you know, sweet Susie Q walks in there and something goes wrong, does she know how to operate this system? So again, it's finding the balance between that. Yeah, and, and our, uh, all of our Ableton rates are personal to the keyboard player. Yeah. We don't have a, a house to Ableton set up or anything because it's, it's primarily the focus for Ableton is for keys yeah. for us, uh, and that's just kind of how it we is. We have enough issues with Ableton all the time that I'd rather <laughs> not run my service. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. they, like, if you're having problems with your click getting off the tracks, yeah, you ain't touching the screen. <laughs> like, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of the times. Yeah, I'm going to use the, I'm gonna use my finger for that. <laughs> Uh, la uh, is there a final question or is that a really good one? Yeah, like, it has to be really nice. <laughs> oh, Ableton was the last question. All right. No, we how can't big, how big is the screen? How big is the screen? It's like, oh, I don't know, it's hundred something feet. I don't know. I made that up. I think it's thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible with anything. Magic. I think it's thirty two by sixteen. Yeah. Feet. Cool. Yes, sir. Final question. So one, one question. I will, I'm over all of our audio, mm -hmm. and we have issues with, uh, um, like, where worship, we keep subbing everybody else, or everybody's playing something different all the time. Um, 
it, getting the same sound all the time has been an ongoing issue where you have one keyboard player that uses this sound and that one and that one and then we don't know, okay, so we have a guy playing strings and a person on the keyboard and they're both playing strings all of a sudden. It's like, okay, which one can I pull down or we have a lot of issues with that, so. Yeah, totally. I can see that. No, we, uh... It actually happens to us all the time. <laughs> it, it happens to us all the time, and we love variety, and I, I never want to cookie cut anything other than snares. I never want to cookie cut anything so that it's the same for the most part. That was a joke. I don't want to do that either. Um, but we do have a very open line of communication that we're yeah. really lucky to have. And I, personally, I'm really fortunate in our... Uh, volunteers that run audio, uh, and it's probably from the top down, just the culture that Caleb wanted to have when he came, Pastor Caleb, when he, he's our executive worship uh, pastor. The culture that he wanted to have was a very open line of communication where the sound tech or the sound technician has a lot of input. Hmm. And uh, that comes from having trust. You need to trust your sound tech. So a whole lot of times in sound checks, I'm giving the most feedback. Yeah. Um, more so than the worship leader, unless Corey's introducing a new song or something like that. And the purpose of that is, you know, just to get things sounding good. Not necessarily consistent, because um, I get bored, you know. I mix audio all the time, but I'm not mixing audio here. I'm usually mixing audio somewhere else. Um, so I love variety, but you just want it to sound good. It's, it's different if... Uh, the difference between something that's like, you know, a quality sound or a bad sound, or sometimes there's a great sound that just doesn't fit in the moment. Yeah. And it's how you approach that moment and how you communicate. Don't be like, hey, that's the worst possible thing you could do at that moment. <laughs> and it's totally masking with the electric guitar. Although sometimes I have said stuff like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because there is relational equity with some people. I wouldn't say that to Sean, or I'd say that to Jonathan Moose, um, probably, um, just because it's quicker. But they would be like, okay, that's great, let's try something else. Yeah. Um, it's how you approach that and doing it for the context of you know, the mix and the team and stuff like that. And a lot of times I'll be like, hey, that sound isn't necessarily cutting through, it's getting a little bit muddy, do you have something else? And then propose another option. Always have a solution that you can suggest, even if you don't think it's like totally the right thing, just be like, maybe, what if it was something like this? Because you don't want to be the person that's just like, ah, 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 no, bad, 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 bad. Because a lot of times you don't know. Um, so that, that really just comes from developing uh, healthy communication with whoever your executive worship leader is. And I always defer to the worship leader. I'll, I'll never, like, exert or, uh, you know, step into the situation that I feel like I'm stepping on the worship leader's toes or something like that. Like I love My primary job was to serve worship leader in that moment. So if that makes sense. Yeah. Sweet. I'm just going to pray for us real quick. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you long to speak to us. And not just a few of us, not just certain ones, but you long to speak to <laughs> all of us. Everyone in this room that you want to develop a relationship with, you want to develop um, a story within the history of them. So I ask in this season, as they begin to step into whatever might be worship leading, uh, production, or, or, or pastoring, or all of the above, um, that they would move into a season of, of a, a friendship with you. That as they're doing what seems like technical work, they would begin to find a way to marry the, the overflow of their heart uh, with what they're doing with their hands. That there'd be a, an overflow of the friendship of the Spirit and, and a familiarity with the Word that it would begin to just uh, pour out through their hands into the work that they're doing. And they would begin to find that they don't actually need to get you know, smarter or, or, or more skilled in what they're doing to be prophetic in, in, in production, but actually just to, to read the scripture and develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And that is what's going to push them and their ministry, their church, into a realm of, and, and, and a breakthrough uh, anointing of flowing with the Holy Spirit in a powerful new way. In Jesus' name, amen.